Uh, we move on to the third speaker. Uh, this is Jonathan, Jonathan K. Jonathan K is a lifelong musician and is currently a PhD student in East West psychology under uh, the mentorship, uh, under my mentorship. His research is exploring the intersection between Eastern wisdom traditions grounded in the integral yoga of Sri Aurobindo and post-structuralist philosophy and psychology based on the work of Gilles Deleuze and Felix Guattari. As a scholar practitioner in arts-based research, Jonathan is exploring musico-philosophical horizons between thought and sound. And his original music is based on heterocultural and transnomadic experimentation through contemplative models of improvisation. Jonathan produces and co-hosts the East West Psychology podcast. His talk is titled, as you can see, Becoming Song, Contemplative Transnomadic Sono Fictioning. Jonathan. You're muted, Jonathan. Perfect. Uh, there we go. Can everybody hear me? Thank you, Devashish. Great. Okay. So it's an honor to be uh, presenting um, a recent project of mine today. There we go. Okay, so today I'm going to uh, talk through a recent art space uh, project titled Becoming Song, Contemplative Transnomadic Sono Fictioning which was a solo music album that I recorded over the course of the pandemic. And I will be releasing it hopefully next week on uh, the Indian Post-Humanism Network website, which is a, a group that I'm part of. Um, and Debashish is, uh, is, a, is a, one of the main members of. And so this musical project, I started to think of in relation to my studies in EWP. And so my work a lot of the time is trying to find the horizons between thought and sound. And so this presentation is going to uh, develop some of the, what I'm calling musico-philosophical concepts, which both gave rise to and resulted from this process. Um, and so this, is, this research is, is uh, just a humble attempt to try to find a language or even a poetics, a philosophical poetics of my musical experience. And I don't intend to, um, this isn't really generated from a speculative uh, positionality. Um, and it's really, I, I'm trying to, trying to uh, sit in that horizon where, where my musical self and my thinking self can, can both be present and one doesn't over uh, or dominate the other. So um, some of the research questions that came up in this process, uh, what are the conditions of transculturality? I'll be using and exploring uh, frameworks of multiculturalism, cross-culturalism, transculturalism, and heteroculturalism. Um, how to trans grass overturn dogmatic, authoritative, and classical images of musical thought or music thought um, in the, it really, which is in the name of musicology, which epitomizes this. And what experimental and performative postures can help evoke the conditions of a musical and an ethical trans or heterocultural um, engagement, creation, and invention. So I'm going to be um, exploring this using the metaphysics um, of uh, Gilles Deleuze and Gilbert Simondon, um, which deals with individuation as psychocosmological ontogenesis. Um, and this, is, this also brings up uh, the post-structuralist framework of philosophy and psychology too, which I believe has really helped me and it, it presents possibilities of thinking the human and human potential radically differently beyond the classical images of thought and anthropocentric assumptions of ourselves and how we may and may not be musical. And I think this has uh, helped, uh, helped me to find a resonance between 
my musical life and, and thinking about music, thinking musically, if you will. Um, so the, the concept here is, you, I'm using here, is a theater of individuation. And I define that from uh, the Gil Deleuze's work as um, a heterogeneous territory of intensive and affective forces and singularities, which are factors in individuation. And the, the term I'm using here, which I think helps me think differently is it, it, it's, it's psychic, it's psychosocial, and it's also psychocosmological. We're in touch with forces, affects, um, intensities that are, are, are on a cosmological level, which are beyond being um, theorized through uh, theorized through like a human centeredness. Uh, this, uh, I'm, I'm using the idea of a musical life here, which is inspired by Gil Deleuze's uh, uh, development of what he calls a life in his uh, essay called Imminence, A Life. And for me, for me, coming set in sound space, which is always more than human and psychosocial and includes like I was so for example when I'm approaching music it's not just about the instrument that I may play or affects affects and other uh, elements like history itself the, the grandpa that tradition how they influence you and additions um, other listeners for instance of that type of music or mentors and teachers uh, techniques so i mentioned the instruments that you play and how you adjust those instruments um, as well uh, music notation for instance um, and uh, recording technologies things like that something like the place also is a big uh, is a, can can lead to having uh, experiences um, and that I've identified as being important in my musical life, like the concert hall you're performing in, the practice room, um, the, the, let's say the, the forest you're walking through <laughs> and hearing, hearing uh, nature sounds or playing your instrument. Um, and then uh, also the, the culture in itself, uh, like normative social pressures to conform or not to conform, uh, or the idea that music is, is a lot of times designed to sell an image through advertising. Um, as well as the, the, the idea that music can be activated through social movements of social justice and revolution. All of these things are, uh, to me, very important in understanding music from the perspective of a musical life in the theater of individuation. So in order to approach understanding how my music has helped me break through and break out of uh, individual and cultural structures that don't serve me, I need to situate myself in the problems of our times and embed myself in the horizons of culture and language. And so, for example, um, quickly, the O'Sullivan has talked about the dominant ontology of our times as capitalism. Um, other people have called it uh, imminent capitalism, the idea that capital is the master signifier. And so one question I've had to approach in my life is how to decouple capital and sound or music. This has been a big challenge for me. Uh, for example, genre is the industry, industry's way of inframing all music or sound that you may produce into pre-made containers of sound space designed to package and sell more easily to targeted audience. So I, I rather feel that I had to, I've become and have to put the question out, how can we become participatory co-creators of heretical and nomadic sound spaces and not merely passive consumers, spectators, or detached connoisseurs of musical experiences as cultural capital. Another important question of our times is that of, of cross-culturality, multiculturalism, which I mentioned earlier. And so how can one engage in an ethic, ethical way of uh, cross, trans, or heterocultural engagement? So I, you know, it, we definitely have to approach overcoming orientalization and cross-cultural fetishization based on essentialized and romanticized or exotic notions um, of musical experiences and, and not just passively consume them as cultural flavors of consumption. Um, so as a, you know, my own intersectionality here as a white 
Anglo-Canadian male. I feel that cross-cultural music in my life has given me platforms to explore these problems, to question my assumptions, and, and try to challenge cultural biases and limitations. Um, I actually felt that this was such an important problem in my life, a problem of my becoming, that I actually felt like I need to remove myself from my own cultural container. I lived in India, and I've traveled to Japan and other parts of the world in searching, uh, searching for non-Western ways of musical knowing. And I deeply embedded myself in these cultures and learned the music from within the culture, becoming somewhat of an insider so that I could engage more deeply in the structures of their culture and music. And I could understand and be a responsible um, person in cross-cultural dynamics and, and try to facilitate a more open and ethical exchange. One of the big problems uh, that the, uh, the thinkers I'm coming from and the postmodern, the post-structural um, movement has uh, brought up is how to move beyond representation. And so a question here is, can music be practiced as a form of thought or a music thought from a radically imminent perspective beyond transcendental illusions or authoritarian and classical images of thought? Um, and this came up in my life in terms of uh, accepting the authority of traditions and really being kind of determined by the gravity of what is uh, considered good by those traditions and not really asking myself what I found to be good or not good. Um, one of the, the, the ways in which we can think this is, and Deleuze has in his work, Difference in Repetition, is that he's looking to question and overturn the model copy paradigm, which is based on identity and representation, which is dominant from Plato onwards. And again, how to bring this into a, a musical milieu is it's really the intention here is to overturn Eurocentric and humanist models of what it means to be musical and music based on representation of a fixed notion and a fixed identity of, of what is truthful music or what is good or beautiful music. And the, the, this is in my life played out in terms of one of my problems is just really the question of how do you conjugate or how do you bring together two different musical materials without unconsciously subjugating one to the other based on some kind of superiority of one over the other? How do you not privilege one over the other? And this can be, this is happening, I believe on a, on a conscious and unconscious level. And so I think that this is a very important um, a, a departure point for my work. And I think that in terms of the, the broader question of art, but it's music here, Deleuze is asking not what does music mean or is it beautiful or is it truthful, for instance, but what does it do? What does it activate in you? What are new uh, forms of sensation that you've discovered with this music? What new organs of perception have been cultivated and can be cultivated? So again, just continuing questions here, like in a very musical way, I'm kind of improvising my way through some of these main questions in, that this work has, has uh, presented. But how can really music be a, a, a way of knowing in itself, a music thought, as I said, and, and, how, and how can these models help generate uh, new knowledges uh, individually and collectively? And so this uh, album that I released it, there's some of the main concepts here, like the musical philosophical concepts I'm trying to develop, contemplation, experimentation, um, non-idiomatic improvisation, which is a form of music I was practicing, which is really um, the idea of that you are trying your best anyway, which is, is this possible or not is another question, but to not, not uh, play from a certain um, uh, traditional perspective, to really put into question all of the, the different perspectives um, and not to privilege one over the other. And that's where I'm using the word nomadism, for instance, and transculturality. So here, um, I'm just talking through some of the, uh, some diagrams here to help us understand how I'm seeing and, and musically engaging with these problems. So cross-cultural or intercultural can be the diagram on the left, a and B are fixed and essentialized notions of what a culture is, what it can do, and C would be the product of them coming into a relation to, to each other. Whether that's a, a conscious relation or a collision of sorts, that's, that's, uh, that's one diagram there. 
The middle diagram is talking about, uh, is an image, a possibility of transcultural engagement where A and B, two different cultures are, are, are opened and made porous um, because that is really much more true to um, not one authoritarian image of, of, a, of, a, of a cultural image, but the idea of that is multiple things to multiple people. You cannot reduce it to one kind of, to a flatness, or you cannot inframe it um, in a certain way. And so it's made porous. You still have the engagement in C between A and B. You also have the arising of D, which is really the, the what is what is produced from that collision in a way, or what is surrounding um, that. And so it's a little there's a little bit more multiplicity here, which I think is very important and opening to uh, realms that uh, may be unknown. And on your right, you'll see a depiction uh, or a depiction I find fitting of heteroculturalism, which is really kind of doing your best to, to, to really make as poor as possible and to bring as many elements into this, this uh, theater of individuation um, um, and not really try to uh, you know, micromanage what elements you want and what you don't want, but allow to, you know, yourself to kind of become into a flow and surrender to something much greater. These uh, images um, uh, that are colored here, the one for heterocultural is actually an artistic depiction coming from uh, A Thousand Plateaus, which is one of Deleuze and Guattari's main works. Okay, so musical transnomadism. Um, important question that came up that I'm raising here and that came up in, in history through uh, the voice and the music of Ornette Coleman, who you can see on the right, how to free music from the caste system of sound, from the tonal caste system. And um, so I think that, that following his example, I think you know, the cultivation of nomadic sound space can be an alternative, to, uh, alternative psychic and psychosocial space, which is always more than human, which displaces fragments and ruptures dominant anthropocentric social and symbolic social orders. And that's really putting into question something like tonality, Western tonality, which is, is assumed um, to be, you know, assumed as a transcendental uh, given by, by many people, by musicology, for instance. Um, so from this perspective, uh, all sounds are, are equal. And he calls this harmelodics. And I think that this has helped me in my life um, create more of an ethical and a radically democratic sound space to engage in experimentation, especially uh, trans and heterocultural. So uh, contemplative improvisation. So I'm, I uh, was inspired by uh, Felix Guattari's work in Chaosmos. Um, and you know, my intention here was to kind of, how do I refrain from traditional norms and etiquettes? And how do I suspend cultural authority and orthodoxy when engaging with these sonic materials? One important approach I took to help uh, with the uh, overdetermination of these traditionally specific structures was to uh, couple uh, my, this approach with Eastern contemplative arts um, by activating a contemplative posture based on this framework that we're going to talk through here. So uh, Guattari speaks of an existential analytic. He calls this also an existential territory. And in this album, um, it's, it served as a site of transduction or exchange between heterogeneous music materials, and which also address certain exist existential problems of my becoming. And I feel that I, um, these existential problems were based on an intuitive openness um, based on not one center of subjectivity, but multiple centers. The machinic analytic, which Guattari speaks of as incorporeal universes, um, are really the, the elements that I kind of collided and conjugated, um, and they're drawn from the sound spaces of jazz improvisation, Indian raga music, uh, Japanese honkyoku shakohachi music, and I feel that they were sort of extracted as traces and liminal sound memories from these uh, musical events that I'm calling are situated in my musical life. So two specific, um, two specific uh, concepts that I am kind of uh, 
filling these two analytics with one being a poke from the Greek tradition, which means to interrupt or suspend, and one from the Japanese tradition, called, which is an aesthetic concept called ma, which means the space between. So Bernard Stiegler, um, I'm coming Jonathan, based, I think, uh, based uh, off of his. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we are out of time. Uh, okay. One more minute, maybe. Uh, sure. Okay. Okay, so I, I won't read this um, this quote here from Stiegler, but really he's talking about um, how apoke in his life and and how I'm experimenting with it too. I'm I'm looking to suspend programs and cliches and attitudes, and so this was important to me when I was making this album, and I feel it's becoming more important to me in making transcultural and heterocultural experimental music. The Japanese aesthetic ma um, is translated as the interval between two or more spatial temporal things or events. This is a quote from Van Damme. It is not only used to suggest measurement, but also carries a meaning of gap, opening, space between, and time between. However, this translation lacks a full understanding of the difference in approach to spatiality rep represented in Ma. Ma is the understanding of an energized middle that makes a difference. And I didn't, I, I wasn't uh, intending to go into how that relates to Gil Deleuze's works, but in Deleuze's work, he speaks about something that can be uh, thought alongside this as the disjunctive synthesis. And so to summarize here, the main question is, what, what is a song? How does all of this relate to song? Well, I felt that this whole process helped me reimagine what a song can be, what a song can do, um, much out, outside of the, the traditional norms um, and assumptions that we have and how we consume these songs. And so uh, uh, just a thought at the end of all of this is how maybe an experimental practice of becoming song can cultivate new collective potentials based on ethical and aesthetic models of musicality and activate an aspiration to build networks of harmonious and polyphonic trans individuals as a condition of perpetual trans nomadic revolution. And so that is a lot about music that you hopefully can hear next week. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, very nice.